and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today I want to show you how you can test locally this web app that has been migrated to serverless. This web app has a backend in Node that has been a uh, lift and shift into a Lambda function, and it has a frontend with React that has been deployed using AWS Amplifies, hosted using that. So I want to show you how you can do local testing, how you can try things and deploy uh, and, and, and try it in your own machine and then push it to the cloud. This video is part of a longer series of content. If you're interested in learning more about this series, stay and until the end and I tell you more. So we are going to jump in and uh, talk about the architecture. So let's start by looking at the application a little bit so you can understand what we are going to test locally. So this is a little bit diagram of our application. We have a backend that is hosted in a Lambda function using this open source component called the Lambda adapter that allows you to bring any uh, web application into a Lambda function. Then we have uh, the web part, the React uh, part, it could be any, any web framework, hosted in an Amplify, and that is getting the data from uh, Lambda. Then uh, we have our database hosted in Mongo Atlas in a different partner uh, somewhere else in the internet. And our Amplify is using Cognito, to authenticate, so we have a login, we have a register, we have a forget password and all that. And also we have permissions in order for users what they can do. And uh, that's for that we are going to use Cognito. And Lambda is also using Cognito to do some kind of authentication. And then the images that this web page has are hosted in S3 and they can be retrieved with a CloudFront distribution. So this is the architecture. And the first disclaimer here is what I mean to test locally. So th this testing doesn't mean not to test with the cloud. So we are going to run uh, these two servers, the React app and the Node app locally from our machine, but there will still be connections to the cloud. The database will still be in Mongo. We are not running that locally. The Cognito will still be working. S3 will still be our storage. We are going to basically run this locally in order for us to develop the application locally, and then we can push it to the cloud. But the services that these applications are connecting are still cloud services. That's an important thing because a lot of time people try to bring the cloud to their local machine and that's not what we want to do. We want to speed development in order to bring new features and that is how we do it by enabling um, the running locally the application. So I will divide this video into two parts, the backend and the frontend, and I will show you how you can configure it. So let's start by the backend. This is my backend stack. I have a whole playlist on how I build this application, so I will not get into there. And in our backend stack, we have this um, backend stack where we are defining our Lambda function that is using the Lambda adapter, and it has basically a whole node and express application inside this backend app uh, folder. So if we go to that backend app, you will see a working node express application. So that's the first thing. If we go to the packet JSON, you can see the scripts that we use to run this locally. So that's defined there. We can start a backend service. We can um, run some tests. We can do all those things. This is a normal node. Uh, then we have the server and in the server we have the index.js that is like the initial part of our application and we have a folder called config. And this is uh, how I did it. You can also do it from the configuration. So you can do npm run and then do the configuration passing there. But I like it in this way because then it's um, easier to define which key you're going to give. So basically in the index.js, that is the basically where we are going to start our application, there is the first import that is requiring that key. And in that key, we are going to define if we are in the prod or we are in the local environment. If we are in the local, we are going to get uh, some information differently, like the Mongo URL, or um, we are going to initialize cores that we don't need it for our um, 
broad uh, service, that's a different story, but... And then in the key, if you open it, you can see that uh, which file is required. And that's the one you need to change in order to run it locally. You run it locally, you put dev. If you run it on the cloud, you put prod. As easy as that. And then you will find a dev example file, because if I show you the dev, you will see all my uh, connections, that, um, that has the, the four things that you need to put here, but you can put any attributes in this JSON, that's up to you. And here is the Mongo URI, the stage, the user pool ID, and the user pool client. This is the cognitive information, and then the URI to connect to the Mongo database. So that you get from Atlas. The stage you can put local because that's what the index is checking. And then the Cognito user pool and client, you can get it from your console or after deploying. In the prod, you will see that we are getting those in a programmatic way. We are getting the uh, Mongo and uh, the user pool from different environmental variables. So you can see the user pool ID and the user pool client and the Mongo URI. So the Mongo URI is coming from the secret manager. So we are using the AWS uh, SDK to get the secret from the um, Mongo URI parameter. So that's something uh, you will see there. And then uh, the user pool and the user pool client are coming from the environmental variables that we are passing to this application as well as the region. So you can see uh, those when we are defining our infrastructure, our Lambda function, then we are passing those variables there and we are using them in the prod uh, moment. But that's the difference between prod and, 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 and dev. And after you do that, then basically you're kind of ready to start. You can see that we are different, uh, getting the Mongo differently, uh, but it's more or less the same idea. One is getting it when it's local, it's doing one thing. When it's um, in the cloud, it's doing a different thing. Then uh, we are setting up the cores if we are in the local environment. We don't need the cores if we are using the Lambda functions URL because we are defining cores there, but there is not much different. And then after we change that key to being um, uh, dev, we go to the folder, the backend app, and then we run the backend. Like with the code that the JSON has, like npm run backend, you will have whatever script you have configured. And then you can see that everything is running and it's good. So um, that's how you run the backend locally. If you want to test it, well, you just go to any REST client and you put localhost, in this case, 8080 support, and you do a query. So I can do localhost 8080 API product and get the products, and you will see that the products are being fetched. The products are being fetched from the internet, so you need to have internet connection. This is just to speed your development. You are testing locally, but with cloud resources. That's important to know. So this is the backend. Now let's move to the front end. And the front end is more of the same. It will be connecting to um, cloud resources. And here, when you're testing the front end, you have two options. Either you are connected to this local host that we just started, and then you have everything running in a local host, or you can put the uh, connection URL to be the Lambda function in the cloud, and you are testing again the real backend locally. That's up to you. So I will leave this running in the back so we can uh, go to the front end. And this is a React application. This React application has been deployed with Amplify, uh, but the only kind of amplification it has is this Amplify YAML. That is where all the environmental variables that we are passing when we are building the Amplify uh, application using CDK are being uh, passed to the React app. So here you can see that there is the server world, the identity pool, blah, 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 blah. So all those things are there. In order to work locally, you need to have a .env file. And or uh, I will show you the .env example, so I don't show you all my links. But basically here you have the server world, the identity pool, the region, the user pool. You can get those from the Amplify application environmental variables. After it's deployed, this list will be available for you. And this, you can configure one for each developer up to you. This is a local thing. You don't put neither the dev file in GitHub or the .m file in GitHub because it has important strings. 
So you complete this as you wish. If you want to use the local host, you put in the server URL local host. If you want to use the Lambda function URL, you put the Lambda function URL there for uh, the backend or whatever is your backend. Populate everything with working values. And then basically you're ready to start the application. NPM start. And with that, then your node, uh, then your React application is running in the cloud, in your local. Then run npm start. And then just like that, the um, React application is running locally, connected to the cloud resources that you specify. So I open this, and this is the application is running locally. You can check it in your browser. The images are coming from S3 and Cloud for distribution. The login and logout is happening through uh, Cognito. But then the rest, I'm using the local host, so everything is happening in, in local. So now I can do changes either to my backend or to my frontend, and I can see everything in my computer without pushing any code to the cloud. This speeds the, the development and makes everything seamlessly as if we were working in a normal web application. And that's kind of uh, <laughs> everything I wanted to show you today. So that's the video for me today. I hope you like this content. A lot of you asked me about uh, running applications locally with cloud services, and this is one way to do it. It's very simple. Every developer can set it up. Please don't commit those files to GitHub, have them in a secret place. And as I said, this video is part of a full series of videos where I'm doing a migration. I'm showing you how to migrate an existing web application to serverless. And we are going to migrate a MERN app, Mongo Express, React, and Node application, but this applies a lot of different web applications. So Node is just an example, React is an example, but you can do more or less the same for Vue, for uh, other type of Spring, uh, PHP, whatever you want. In this series of videos, you will find shorter pieces like this one, or a longer piece that will show you the migration end to end. If you go to the playlist that is linked in the description box, you will see which videos are available. And if you don't find all the videos, the videos are being published right now. So unless you're watching in the future, you might need to subscribe to get the notifications. And with that, I say bye-bye, and I see you in another episode of Ubar. Ciao, ciao.